Let's hit it. Most passing yards. Uh, the odds read Herbert, yeah. number one, first uh, plus 650. Stafford, eight to one. And then Brady, who led the league in yards passing, 5,300, is uh, eight to one odds. Um, yeah. Harry, start us off. Herbert's the darling of the year. I don't know how he doesn't have more than 6,000 yards passing and the Chargers <laughs> don't win 15 games the way everybody is just going nuts. And you're right there with it. Go ahead. I am. I am, Sal. I'm going to take Herbert as a favorite at plus 650. 9,350 yards in just two seasons in the NFL, over 5,000 last year. Uh, one of the most explosive offenses in the league. You got Eckler, who's a tremendous pass catcher out of the backfield, 647 yards last year, 70 catches, second best of his career. Uh, Mike Williams re-signed him and Keenan Allen, um, over 180 receptions combined last year, and they acquired tight end uh, Gerald Everett from Seattle who had a career high in receptions, targets, and yards last year as well. Just love this uh, Charger offense. I'm going to take Herbert, more pa most passing yards, plus 650. And again, I know we said it last week, you know, we, me and you both, Sal, like Tampa Bay to go like under 11 and a half, you know, get to 11, maybe Brady at that point. Once they have, if they do have the division racked up, they won't, he, the last couple of weeks won't need to pass so much. Herbert may have to do it in the AFC West, plus mm -hmm. 650. All right. I mean, it's not bad. It's not great odds. Uh, everybody loves him. Um, it, it's almost not fair that he gets an extra down than everybody. I mean, that's always going to go for it on fourth down every single time. So I could see why that number is low. Parley kid, I should have started with you uh, on all the Brady talk. You could still get the incumbent who had most passing yards last year at eight to one Brady. That's who you are. Yeah, that's why I'm going with Brady because he is the incumbent here at eight to one. I think this is pretty good value for a guy that uh, threw for 300 more yards than Herbert did last year, who was the second closest, and 500 more yards than the third, uh, the second closest actually to him was Stafford. Mm -hmm. Herbert was the next closest to him. Uh, 500 more yards than Stafford, well ahead of everybody else. Uh, it's hard to believe it. At his age, he did it. He threw for 4,600 yards his first year with the Buccaneers. So. This is a guy who's averaging about in his two years with the Bucks about five thousand yards passing a year. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I again until he can't do it anymore, and I can get decent value on a guy like Brady who seems to stay healthy. I know there's some offensive line issues that they're having right now, but if they once they get Godwin back with uh, Mike Evans, um, Russell Gage was a decent pickup. For this team, I think he's a little bit banged up yeah, at this time. Yeah, he's banged up a little bit. Yep. Uh, you know, the tight end uh, is, is, you know, without Gronk is not the same. But Brady's one of these guys, like, sometimes I, I don't know if it matters. He just finds guys to throw the ball to. Like, he makes, so that, yeah. he, you know, he did it for years in New England without uh, superstar receivers. I just think being, he threw 300 more yards than his nearest competition last year. I'm not going to get, I'm not going to, I'm going to take the odds at eight to one. I think it's too yeah. good to pass up. And I have the same reasoning. And you know, there, there's a knock on Brady with the offensive line, especially the interior offensive line. And uh, I don't believe all the shit that he was gone for two weeks and it's going to matter in October. I really don't. So that's the knock on him. The knock on Mahomes also eight to one, who by the way, eight to one for MVP. And we'll give our MVP picks uh, next week, but Always like that, Brian. You know my thing with Mahomes. He's going to win one out of the next five years. If you yep. get eight to one or usually six to one, you got to take him. I get it. It's a different system. The knock on him, Tyree Kill, number one receiver out, but still got Travis Kelsey, Harry's MVP, great, as good a security blanket as you can get in the league. I think Juju and Scantling can fill the void. I like this guy more. Everything you read about him is good. And by the way, he creates his own opportunities, Mahomes, right? It's like... You know, if it's like an offensive lineman went down and you said, oh, Barry Sanders is going to be shit. It's like, no, he's playing a different game out there, right? Improvising all the time. I like eight to one for uh, Mahomes for most yards. Um, you are staying in the division there with your boy, Derek Carr. Yeah, Derek Carr at 10 to one. I mean, I do like Darren. I mean, Brady at eight to one seems like really good value. And uh, this car may seem like a homer pick, but it really is not. It you is. know, he finished he, fi <laughs> <laughs> he, he finished fifth last year with 4,800 yards. And if you recall his first few games, he went, he kind of went nuts. He had mm -hmm. some huge games. But uh, you argue, you know, you add arguably the best receiver in football to this team. And now I, I do think, you know, Harry kind of brought this up maybe last week when we were discussing. But now in the AFC West, you're going to have you're going to have to have some shootouts, right? The Raiders are going to have to have some shootouts against the Chargers, against the Chiefs. So Carr's going to have to put up big numbers. 
Um, I, again, there's a lot of pressure on Carr this year, but I think the expectations are he should be close to 5,000 yards this this season. So I like them at 10 to 1. Mm-hmm. All right. So now the next category is most uh, touchdown passes. And I, I don't know. Yeah, look, if you have most passing yards, you could probably take the same guy for touchdown passes. There's no telling how those yards will, what they'll result in. And they'll probably, if it's, if you like them to get enough yards, they'll probably the touchdown pass numbers will be boosted too. But for this Brady is favored at plus four fifty. Herbert right there at six to one, Josh Allen, seven to one. Harry, we haven't mentioned Josh Allen in any of these, but um, you know, he's favored to win MVP. Probably going to have to compete in the top two in some of these categories, right? Yeah, yeah, and I think is it maybe you know his peers voted like we just said voted him thirteenth best player, maybe a little extra motivation. Um, to, I'm gonna take him at seven to one to have the most touchdowns, thirty seven and thirty six last two years. He had six hundred and forty six attempts last year, the most of his career. This team is gonna be loaded on offense all over the. It's gonna put up big numbers all over all season. Tight end Dawson Knox, part like kids, uh, maybe his favorite tight end, maybe behind Schultz in the league, has turned into a real weapon for Allen. Nine touchdowns last season. Stephon Diggs since coming over from Minnesota in two seasons, averaging nine touchdowns a season. He's got 18, and I'm calling it right now, a bust-out season, bust-out season for wide receiver Gabriel Davis. Gabriel Davis. Remember, yeah. he had he was the guy that had the four <laughs> touchdowns versus Kansas City in the playoffs, 13 touchdowns in two years in Western New York for the Bills. I'm going to go Josh Allen, most touchdowns. Bills are going to put up probably the most points in the league. Seven to one, most touchdown pass. Very sexy pick that Gabriel Davis, and I fell for it too. I had a draft last night. I took everyone's second best receiver. I don't have anyone's top guy. I have mm. uh, Brian. I got your Renfro, uh, not mm-hmm. Dev- Devontae Adams. I went Gabriel Davis. Uh, who I took Allen Robinson. So I'm trying something new here. I won three titles last year. I might as well mix it up. Um, Harry, you have to take <laughs> Herbert too. You got if you took him for yards, you got to take touchdown. I'm not saying that should be your one pick, but. Uh, uh, you'd feel stupid, right? If he had the most touchdowns, but didn't have as many yards. Right. So I think you gotta, I think you kind of have to take the same. I'm going to go, I'm going to go Mahomes, Mahomes, but I do like the odds with Burrow at 10 to one 34 mm. touchdowns last year. Look, all these guys are going to throw around 4,800 yards. You can flip a five or six sided coin to see which will result in touchdowns. As I mentioned, chase an amazing ability to create separations Higgins and Boyd all around. No, no reason they can't score around 10 touchdowns. I got Hayden Hurst. Um, he had six touchdowns in 2020. Burrow was sacked 70 times in 20 games. They figured out, at least I think they did on paper through free agency, uh, a fix on how to keep him upright. That offensive line should be better. Um, you know, who knows what Burrow's limitations are if uh, he doesn't get sacked. I like 10 to 1. Parley Kid, you have Stafford at 7 to 1. Yeah, coming off a season where he threw 41 touchdown passes for the Rams. Stafford's a gunslinger, Sal. Um, Mm -hmm. And McVay allows him to be a gunslinger here in this offense. Uh, Cooper Cup uh, is just uh, absolutely dynamite in this. I don't see any reason why he should be slowing down. Uh, I think he has another fantastic year. Allen Robinson they brought in, uh, who uh, Harry's been begging to get out of Chicago and wherever else he's been in his career. Uh, mm-hmm. He should thrive in this in this offense. Uh, McVay quarterbacks throw for touchdowns uh, for the most part, um, and I just feel like Stafford. Uh, this offense suits him very well. I think he has another great year. Goes for forty plus touchdowns. Um, you know, maybe even closer to forty five this year. That could get it done here. Uh, so let's take Stafford at seven to one. Right. I got to take, uh, Brian, you like Mahomes. Uh, like I said, if I took him for yards, I have to also take him for touchdowns, but I'm going to throw Burrow in the mix to uh, Mahomes seven to one. Seems like a good number there. Yeah. And to your point, yeah. If you're going to take him for yards, probably take him for touchdowns. I wouldn't say that's the case for maybe Carr because I, I Carr in his career has never thrown for over 30. So mm-hmm. uh, I don't know if there's that big of a jump in touchdowns, but I, it's it's I'm very curious to watch the Chiefs play this season. You know, are they going to go back to unleashing Mahomes, or you know, are they going to be play at these games close to the vest? You know, he still finished with 37 touchdowns last season, and I don't know if you remember, he had that stretch in the middle of the season. He had which was crazy because I know Parley Kid always used to like the over like two and a half touchdown passes, but he had that stretch where he had one touchdown pass or less in yeah. five of six games last year. In oh, five yeah. of six games, what a stretch. Uh, but he started out really hot. He had 14 touchdowns in the first four games. And then he 
in the playoffs, he was really good too. I mean, he had 11 touchdowns in three games. So I think they're going to go, you know, even without Hill, you know, he's the type of guy, even when you look at his numbers last year, he's gonna, he might have multiple five touchdown games, which right. gets him to this number quicker than anybody. Like I do think there are games where he could have 250 yards, but five or six touchdowns. So, um, yeah, I, I liked him here, especially at seven to one. And obviously it's a little bit uh, juicier because the odds are because Tyreek Hill is not in there. Yeah. But I, I keep For sure. mentioning this, Brian. I know I don't have to remind you. He had four touchdown passes against the Raiders in the first quarter last year in a game that Tyreek Hill didn't play. So yeah. I think he's going to be able to <laughs> figure out how to write the ship. All right. These other guys, yeah. most regular season interceptions. This is a fun one to bet, especially towards the end of the year. Right. Uh, I think I had, lo- I, I had, oh no, I had golf last year. So I was kind of out of it, but uh, mm. somehow, somehow he wasn't competing for that prestigious, um, award there, but Justin Fields is the favorite to throw the most interceptions. It's eight to one actually co-favorite with Zach Wilson. Wasn't even going to start game one, right? Eight to one odds. Davis yep. Mills. I don't think that's fair. Eight to one odds. Baker 10 to one Trevor Lawrence. You know, the key is you, these guys have to play. So Trevor Lawrence 10 to one. And then, uh, spaghetti's Daniel Jones. 16 to one. I'll jump right in there. Lawrence uh, tied Stafford with 17 last year. He had the most. He and Stafford 17 and you can get 10 to one with him. Now, I understand he's matured by a year, but he's still in that AFC South where the top two teams, the Colts and the Titans, they both solid pass defense, especially now the Colts with Stefan Gilmore in the mix. Kevin Byard for the Titans. Uh, They play the AFC West. Great pass rushers on every team. Not crazy to think he'll have between 14 and 18 picks again, even if he does have a better overall season. I like Lawrence 10 to one. Harry, you're going with a big long shot here uh, in Ryan Tannehill. Yeah, you guys are probably surprised. I didn't go with Justin Fields, but I think that that's eventually yeah. with that uh, with their offensive uh, weapons on uh, at wide receiver, I think, and not the greatest offensive line either. I think he's going to get hurt. So they, again, so you got to play these games. So if you get hurt, you're out. So I think he will get hurt at some point and miss some significant time. So what I'm going to go with, I'm going to go at 30 to one. I'm going to take Ryan Tannehill at 30 to one. Look at 14 last year. He has had 17 in his career. Uh, he was he's, he was bad last year when the chips were on the table versus Cincinnati in the playoffs. He had three in that game. No more A.J. Brown to rely on. And if Henry misses significant time again like he did last year, that puts even more pressure on Tann- Tannehill to succeed and get things done. And I'm not sure he can do it with the wide receiving core that he has. 30 to one isn't bad for a guy who had 14 last year. It's not bad. And he'll play, I don't know, uh, we're talking about today, like Malik Willis, if he gets playing time, and when does Tannehill get yanked? But um, if he if he continues on like he did against Cincinnati, where what did he throw a, an interception at the beginning of the half, the end of the half, the beginning of the, the both halves? It was, it was crazy. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough one, Parley Kid, because you have your guy has to play, right? So you have Stafford here. Stafford, like I said, and Lawrence, both at 17. But your guy has to... If you, if your guy has 14 through um, six games, he's not going to play the rest of the year. So you almost you almost have to take two guys here, right? You're going with Stafford, though. Yeah, just like I went with Stafford with the touchdowns. Um, mm-hmm. He's a gunslinger, Stafford, right? And I, I think that uh, McVay allows him to be. He's okay with him making mistakes uh, throughout the course of the game because he knows he's going to make some big plays, too. And that's what Stafford has done throughout his career. He threw 17 picks last year. Uh, and they were Super Bowl champions. Uh, so I just think that mentality that Stafford has in it, and uh, I, I'm, I'm okay with it as you know, as a guy that uh, you know, my own son plays quarterback. You know, you got to be aggressive. Stafford is an aggressive quarterback. He always has been. He's a guy that throws the ball downfield. He's going to make mistakes. He's going to make some bad decisions once in a while, but he always makes up for it with some big plays. We saw that last year. Uh, and when you can, you know, he's afforded that opportunity. Uh, and as long as he's healthy, he's going to be playing in every game, right? So, um, right, uh, coming off a year where he threw seventeen, I think he might be back in, you know, right around that area again for himself. Mm-hmm. So let's roll with Stafford. Uh, I'm seeing him at fourteen to one, actually. No, uh, you guys 20. might see it differently. Twenty, nice. you're seeing him at twenty. Yeah. yeah. Well, then I even love it for the guy who led the league in <laughs> interceptions last year. Well, that's what I at mean. Twenty Between- to one. Between Lawrence and Stafford, one's 10, one's 20. They both had 17. Good, good, you know, good chance that one of our both are going to be right there in the mix again. Yeah, 20 to one's pretty good uh, wow. for hey. Stafford. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Bry, I, I didn't even think about Tua 
They almost should have like through eight games who will have the most interceptions, yeah, right? I like because that. Yeah. I could yeah. because I could see like Tua. <laughs> that's my problem with Tua. I'm I'm with you with the interceptions. I think I'll have them, but I could see them putting Bridgewater in. They like the Skylar well, Thompson, right? Like he's right. Uh, he's been a, a a preseason darling too. So yeah, uh, but I, I think Tua will have his number. Yeah. That's the thing that makes like the interceptions to me is the most fun, right? Because you yeah. can get you get a lot of value, like even part of the kid getting Stafford who led the league at twenty to one, right? There's, mm-hmm. But, like, when you look at guys, right, Allen, Herbert, Carr, Burrow, Mahomes, those guys were all close to last year. They were only two or three off. A bunch of them had 15. I think Herbert and Allen both had 15. Right. Uh, so they were right there. So, yeah, it's a weird thing. You almost need, like, these guys, you, you almost need them to put up good numbers, uh, but, yeah. like, have won a game, right? Like, you can't. Right. You yes. can't go out there probably and have two, four interception right. games and still keep your job, which mm-hmm. is tough. But, you know, you talk about, you know, you can't have really to win this. You really can't have anybody looking over your shoulder. So obviously Lawrence is a good is a good bet at 10 to one just because if he throws 10 interceptions, if he throws 30, they're not he's not coming out. Right. right. Like, mm-hmm. uh, the only thing, you know, I know Tua has Bridgewater there, but I do think this offense this year is more explosive. Right. So like if, if you were look, I think. I still think Tua probably will put up some pretty good numbers, but the interceptions might be there. And if you look at his numbers last year, he had 10, 10 interceptions in like 380 attempts. Whereas, you know, if you project that out to like 600 attempts, that's 16, 17 there. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was good value at 20 to one. Even guys like Lamar Jackson last year, he had 13 interceptions and like he, it felt like he barely played, right? So, and I think he only had 320 pass attempts or something. Yeah, so, I don't know how that happens either because I don't see yeah, him. Yeah. He doesn't sling it as much in, in my right. mind at least. Yeah, some yeah. of that might be, um, you know, you probably have to look at that too. I know there's there's charts out there with like unlucky versus, mm-hmm. you know, right. lucky interceptions. So Two um, is good. I yeah. don't believe what I'm seeing or hearing about, you know, they only show when he hits uh, Tyreek Hill on a bomb, but I think uh, as a few of those will be underthrown. He'll get it right a few times. Um, but yeah, I don't mind that number. It's one to one. Oh, it's a fun one. That's uh, that might yeah, be my favorite fun. quarterback category. There are other uh, individual quarterback props. We're going to give you a few each. We'll go through this fast. I'll, I'll start us off. You know, I don't normally like going over on anything. Um, but, uh, you know, for, for these other things, interceptions, someone's going to win. So you might as well take uh, odds. But as far mm-hmm. as just straight up 50 50 over unders, I'm going to go under on almost everything. Uh, Davis Mills, I figure I want to be positive on one. I'll go over for him, 34.50 and a half, the Texans quarterback. That's not that much. That's 215 a game if he only plays 16 games. And I think he's that kind of guy, Brian. I think they leave him in. I don't think, I don't see them taking him out. Um, He had over 330 against the Seahawks at the end of the year. He had four 300 yard games last year. Uh, one of the better quarterbacks in the last five or six weeks of the season, certainly the best, one of the best rookies, uh, lots of soft games on the schedule. Damian Pierce, if he pans out at running back, it could open up the passing game. Cooks is a deep threat. You know, the problem with this is you're rooting for guys like Nico Collins and Chris Conley's of the world. But um, again, I don't love overs. This one I'm into a 215 yards a game for 16 games. Davis Mills will get you there over 34, 50 and a half. Harry, God, give us your annual Kirk Cousins. You know, you what you like that, all that shit. I, I don't know. Do you win on this every year? <laughs> his individual, his individual <laughs> stats are always decent, and then it's like uh, seven and ten. They're better than decent, actually, if you really look at them. But I was going to take Cousins at third, at, just to have at least thirty-five touchdowns mm-hmm. at plus two ten. Captain Kirk has hit thirty or more touchdowns three or four years in Minneapolis. In 2020, he had 35. This team is loaded on offense. Uh, he's got the backing of a head coach, unlike he did, didn't did have when Zimmer was the head coach. Excellent running back in Del- Delvin Cook, who's uh, a fantastic receiver as well out of the backfield. Justin Jefferson is going to say it right now. Probably going to have the most touchdowns in the NFL receiving. He's got he's at 17 the past two years. Going to be a monster this season. Thielen's still decent. Irv Smith is going to be a tight end that they're going to rely on a lot. And they even that's got Jalen Naylor, a rookie out of Michigan State speedster. Go for the bombs with him. 35 or more touchdowns for Cousins, and you're getting a little better than two two and a, uh, two times your money. All right. Well, we had to let him get him out of his system, right? Right, Parley Kid? He's got to get the Cousins yeah, stuff out. Let's get let's <laughs> you feel good, Harry? Yeah, you fine. feel all right? Yeah. All right. Captain Cousins, Kirk, baby. 35 or more. I actually don't hate that. Uh, Parley Kid, yeah. Mahomes. Um, 
boy, 34 and a half seems low. And I get it all with Tyree kill being gone, but it's still, I don't yeah, care. Well, you know, That's still like two bro- a game. Right. Right. And like brother Bryce said, like, um, it's weird though with Mahomes because I I look I, I go back and look at his career stats and you're like, this seems like too easy, right? It's two a game, but you know a couple of years ago he threw for 26 touchdowns in 14 games, like mm-hmm. it's kind of strange. Like wait, where did that come from? You almost forget because that was off. Now he had been hurt that year, um, so it right. might have been uh, an issue with just not really, uh, you know, protecting him more, but. He's the last two years, aside from his 50 touchdown season uh, uh, several years ago, 38 and 37 the last two years. I'm always, anytime I see a Mahomes uh, over two and a half uh, touchdowns, I'm jumping on it. I lost a lot on it last right. year, but I don't see a world in where Mahomes plays 17 games or 16 games or 15 games and doesn't throw for more than 34 and a half touchdowns. I just don't see it. I know Hill's gone, but. Kelsey's going to catch 12 touchdowns. The rest of these guys are going to make up for it, whether it's uh, Smith Schuster. Uh, McCall Hardman was coming on at the end of last year, maybe mm. finally figuring himself out in that Chiefs offense. And maybe this year he takes a more prominent role. And you mentioned a few other guys before, too. So I think I just don't see a world in yeah, where Scantling, Mahomes. Scantling, Sky Moore. Yeah, they're they're, they're going to rack Sky up Moore, TDs Scantling, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see it. I just don't see it uh, where Mahomes would go under. And here's another thing, Sal. Like Brian said, I do think there have been times over the past several years where the Chiefs just come into a game and it's kind of ho hum. Mm-hmm. They're not they're not balls to the wall. They can't do that this year in that this divi- in this division. Right. Every game is going to mean something to this team this year. Mahomes is going to have to be at his best for this team to even make the playoffs. I think. So I don't see it. Like, there's there's going to be no games off here for this Chiefs team. They got to be well, ready every single week. And Mahomes has to be at his best every single week. Over two, 34 and a half at minus 112. Two things about this. First of all, you're right. Every game is going to count. And most importantly, week seven, uh, week 18, I guess, is would it be, is almost definitely going to count, right? This is probably not going right. to be a year that the Chiefs run yes. away with the division. In the past, he sat that last game. So Correct. you're going to get, if you're close, you're going to get screwed there. Not the case. Secondly, Parley kid, you do love this betting bet. I, I bet I get screwed with, will the quarterback throw a touchdown and I'll go like six out of seven. You go yeah. over one and a half with Mahomes. It's two and a half this year. Like you said, it's going to be two. You're, you're going to get a push on some worst comes to worst, right? It won't be two Correct. and a half for you. I don't think if the over under is 34, and a half for 17 games, Great right? Point, Sal. You're going to get Great right there. Point. Too. If so, this comes down to two yeah. and even some games, you might even see them at one and a half. Oh, you're going to bet I, it every week. You're going to be on I'm, this I'm going to bet week, it every so. week. Uh, there's a lot yeah. of guys. I mean, I already, I already put in a, uh, a right. parlay with, um, you know, over touchdowns, I think with these mm-hmm. guys. So, Oh boy, let's go. There you go. All right, Bri, <laughs> Bri, you had Daniel Jones at 3450 names, uh, numbers, the same as Davis Mills. Uh, yeah, and you're going under passing yards for Daniel Jones. Uh, yeah, I love I love the under for Danny Boy. This is his last chance. You know, the funny thing, you know, he had a very promising first season with like 3,000 yards in 13 games, but his numbers have regressed every year. Then you've, you you got to factor in, right? Can he stay healthy with the neck issue, right? Can he mm-hmm. play well enough to keep Taylor away from him? So Taylor, it seemed like, you know, even though he was carted off, I guess they're saying he was fine. It was just his, a hit, I guess, to the chest. So he's he's Taylor's still right there if the Giants want to win some more games. So if he's a turnover turnover machine or if he takes a bad hit, he could be done. The over here is so risky. I think you, you, there's too many reasons to play the under here at uh, 34, 50 and a half. You know, he would need, you know, 500 yards better than his rookie season. I don't see it. Take the under. I uh, look and I, I like unders all the time. Uh, this one's a pass for me. I don't know why I like the Giants so much this year. I don't know why. And like and and they've had nothing but bad news the last two weeks, right? <laughs> like with the with Thibodeau with that block, and then yet yesterday with Taylor going out, and Galladay doesn't want to block, and there's footage of that. Just everything you see about the Giants is shit. Uh, but I still like them to get to eight wins, and I think Daniel Jones is going to have to be instrumental in there. But thirty four fifty seems. About right. All right, Harry, uh, you love Cousins. You hate Rodgers. Go ahead. That uh, hit. Finish off this exact thing. Aaron Rodgers under 30 and a half touchdown passes. It is a nice exact. All right. Yeah, I'm going to go Rodgers under 30 and a half touchdowns. No Adams again. Really going to hurt production, especially with an extremely young wide receiving core. Uh, 
that has uh, he's fallen short of 30 touchdowns in three of his last five seasons with the pack. And again, uh, no Adams who had at least 10 or more touchdowns in five of the last six seasons. Let's see this wide receiving core. He's got uh Cobb who's 32 years old. Now I don't think Alan Lazard is really a number one receiver. Mm. Uh, t- uh, Tanyan uh, tore his ACL last year against the, uh, the Cardinals. Uh, questionable if he can return to that 11 touchdown guy that he was in 2020, because if you include last year, the games he played in the two years before that 2000 season in 35 games, he only has a total of four touchdowns I'm going Rogers. Like I said, three of the last five years under 30 touchdowns and doing it again with no Adam. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not doing it. Parley kid. I'm not betting against Aaron Rodgers. Nope. I'm, I'm, I just can't nope. do it. I, who, Devontae Adams. Great. Uh, if he pans out for the Raiders, great. Jordy Nelson was not a great receiver on another team. He just, he wasn't, he, he, what are you going to do? Like he just, and he, and, and Rogers fed him 15, 14, 13 touchdowns. He makes superstars. Jo- Jordy Nelson's better than that list that I just gave. Is he though? Is he without sure. Rogers? I don't know. I'm not sure. I guess, I guess he is because Rogers made him I, great. I um, would never bet. I would never pick against Rogers on anything. I think Rogers is coming into this year with a chip on his shoulder. Uh, I've liked what everything else Harry said today. I just wouldn't bet against Aaron Rodgers. And this is, again, this uh-huh. is more because it's just a personal dislike for Aaron Rodgers. This has nothing to, oh, to oh, me. No, 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 no. And this no, is a no, spite no. pick by Harry. This is a spite pick. <laughs> no, no. Listen, Rodgers yeah, could be, yeah. listen, listen, two, two years in a row, 0 for 2 at home in the playoffs, zero touchdowns last year in the playoffs, and you don't have Adams. You're just right. give that prop. Just give the prop swap pick away. Right? <laughs> yeah, give it away. Exactly. Come on, what are you just doing? give it away. Yes, yes. All right. <laughs> I agree. Rogers' uh, woeful playoff numbers are going to hurt his thirty and a half regular season touchdown pass number. As, oh, I, you I, know, I care what we're just doing. saying. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll go under with uh, someone who thinks uh, everyone thinks is going to explode. Russell Wilson, another thirty-one and a half touchdown passes. Um, he's gone under six of his last 10 years. You, you can make it like, oh, last year he got hurt and everything. And, you know, it's a different story. Under, under 31 and a half and six of the last 10 years. He's had monster wide receivers, right? Lockett, Baldwin, Metcalf. You like Jerry Judy? You like all these guys? That's fine. You, everyone also loves Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon. So is this, are they going to put up 45 points a game? I'm not sure all this is going to work out for Denver. I think 31 and a half is too, too uh, ambitious there. They're going to ease them in. Like I said, nice secondaries in the AFC West. Not everyone in that division is going to put up 40 touchdown passes. I think Russ is under 31 and a half. Pencil me in around 28, 29. All right, uh, Parley Kid, you're going Herbert in that division over 35 and a half. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of the same thing, right? It's kind of, Maybe it's a boring pick here. I just went with Mahomes over 45 and a half, 34 and a half. I'm sticking with Herbert over 35 and a half. He's gone, went from 31 to 38 uh, mm-hmm. last year. Uh, I think uh, he's still ascending, still getting better. Uh, I think he uh, goes over 40 this year. Uh, I think, I did, is, was it Harry who had him most touchdown passes? Mm-hmm. Uh, is that correct, Harry? You had him. Um, which I, I can't I, even I keep going. We've been too. talking about no, the same yards, seven quarterbacks for an hour. Yeah, I have no right. Idea and, right. And yeah. I, again, in that division, <laughs> he's going to have to be, he's going to have to perform for that team to, to play well. And he's going to have to have big games and he's going to, he's, he's playing in a passing offense, even with Eckler, right. His running backs, he's always dumping the ball to They're making big plays out of the backfield. This guy's going to be throwing the ball a ton of times, 40 plus times every game. He steps on the field. No reason why he's basically not throwing for a little bit more than two touchdown passes a game. I mean, and that's the thing, right? So at 35 and a half, uh, this is going to be a screw job, Parley Kid, when every week, if they do put a two and a half line in front of you, right? It's like, that Whoa. is a screw job. If they do, yeah, I should be getting two most of the now time. Now I'm so. thinking they will. Brian, yeah. now I think they will. They like the half. This is what they're going to well, do, right? This is how they're going to screw me. Yeah, they don't want to pay out this. pushes. They know people will go t- over two and a half. Now that I think about it, I kind of think that it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You think they're only going to get 34 and 35 Mahomes and Herbert, which averages two a game. Why are you going to set the line at two and a half? Interesting. All right, we're going to keep an eye on this, uh, Parley Kid. Brother Bry, uh, I know Harry's not going to like this. Well, he he might be okay with it. I know he hates Justin Fields, but mm-hmm. 
I, this is when I was looking at all the bets. I think this is maybe my favorite one. Justin Fields over 500 and a half rushing yards. Um, so when the only thing, obviously, there's a caveat here. Fields loves to take some big hits when he's running the ball. So if he could slide more and avoid some of these hits, uh, yeah. this is definitely going to go over to me. Uh, he had four. The other caveat is he's, he can't be benched. But right. yeah, I, I know you're saying. He can't be benched, right? <laughs> Field, yeah, he they they can't bench fields. I mean, at this this point, they got to see uh, what Brian, they have. But I, I like what you're saying. He's over 18 and a half on the touchdown passes too, which I like. I I know you guys people mm. have been trashing fields. I think he's going to have a pretty good year for this team. Why? I'm not I saying the Bears are going to be good. Why? I hate I think those Bears, receivers. I know, but look, he looked sharp in preseason. I know that doesn't mean Stop. anything, and I, I hate preseason. Stop. But hmm. the guy is going to be okay. Brian, keep going. I'm sorry. I should no, have that's okay. But Field, no, I love Field. how he was. By the way, I loved how Fields was 14 of 16 this weekend with three touchdowns. I love that he was. Go ahead and get it the over. <laughs> Go could. ahead, Derek. Right. Go ahead. Go this ahead. Could be, 18 this and could, a half over this on could the be touchdowns. Fun. Yeah, this could be fun, though. But um, I think Trevor but, Simeon over, maybe. I don't know about Fields. I'm not sure here. But, right, Field, no, but look, so Fields, though. 425 yards rushing in tw- just 12 games last mm-hmm. year. So if you look at the other recent quarterbacks who ran as well as he did in their rookie season, like I'll name them. Jalen Hurts went from 354 to 784 rushing in his second year. Okay. Kyler Murray went from 544 to 819 in his second year. Lamar Jackson went from 695 to 1206 in his s- second year, right? I think 500 is just way. I mean, again, he projected to be close to – Seven hundred yards rushing last year if he yep. played every game. So Shit. I would also I would also potentially look at Trevor Lawrence too here, but I just didn't see odds for him rushing rushing mm-hmm. the ball. But it feels going to have to use his feet. Unfortunately, that line could be terrible. I, he's going to have to be mobile there again. He's going to have to avoid. You know, he had the knack last year and also in college taking big hits. So he's going to have to get down. Uh, but I think five hundred for him. Yeah, that's low. not so bad. I, You're right. Over that's a good yep. case. You made a good case. Yep. We we know Stay these guys stop running. Benched. They stop. Well, that's it. Benched or hurt, he's, but otherwise that that's that's yeah, a he's good not number. getting benched. But really, he's, he's not, Fields he's not is not getting benched. He's not getting benched. He's their quarterback. They know what they've given him around him. There's going to be no one of those games, on Darren. He, one of those games in the second quarter. He's got three picks and they're not moving the ball, and they're in their home in Soldier Field, and the Boo Birds are coming. I'm way it down be on the Bears. Fields. I'm not the one to talk to about this. I have them winning three games. So <laughs> essentially they could bench him if, if that's the case. So that, that's how it works out in my mind. But if he does play every game, 500.5 is a uh, really good number. Yeah, these guys, they don't give up on running until like their fifth or sixth year, right? Second yeah. year, yeah, as yeah, Brian yeah. pointed well, out. Yeah, I think second year is okay. He's got, yeah, because he's he's got to win some games. Contract he's contract year, Sal. That's one exactly day. Right. Murray did his third this stopped. past that's year. Murray definitely yeah, did his third. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly now, but now he's saying. got his money, Murray. So. Mm-hmm.